Hello, everybody. Good to see you. How's everybody doing today? Hope you're doing well. I hope you are doing well. Can you hear me? See me? I hope. There we go. Hi, Jan. I wasn't sure whether I was actually live or if it was a figment of my imagination. <laughs> Could have been, you know. Could have been. Pardon me while I shove stuff around on my desk. No matter how much time I have or how much I think I'm ready to do something, I'm not. <laughs> I'm having tea with you today. going to imagine together that it's a drama free Friday. All right, is the sound okay? Hi Riri and Terry and Christy and Diane and Purple Nana. I'm sorry I don't know your name. Um, I think I said Cindy already. Hi Becky, Debbie and CB. Hello CB. Hi Linda. Good afternoon to you. Good to see you all. Nice to be with you today. Hopefully everything functions as is okay. Hi Jane Journey. Purple Nana is Linda. Linda, welcome. And if you've been here before, I just didn't recognize your name, but that's not a surprise. <laughs> that's not a surprise. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad each and every one of you are here. Hi Sherry. You made it live. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Good to see you. Hi, Gail. Oh, I'm glad you are spending time with here. I'm with, with here. Listen to me. <laughs> I don't talk much during the day. Um, and so when I do speak, it's like, do I remember how to make conversation? <laughs> Sometimes it's a challenge. Hi, Beth. You're working and lurking? Okay, good. Hey, Nancy. Hi, Gail. Hi, Shu. Hi, Cheryl. I know, you know, this is just going to irritate the people who um, don't like live streams. <laughs> they don't like live chats. I think most of them don't get it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's my stream. I can do it the way I want, right? That's right. Hi, Tori. Oh, Linda Pierce. Okay. Gotcha. Well, hopefully I'll remember that, but in a high degree of probability, I won't. Hi, Ivy. Good to see you. Anyway, it is Friday, and um, hopefully it will be drama-free. I know there's a lot of drama going on in the world, and we're going to pretend it's not. Because um, if there's something that we could do about it, we should go and do it. And other than that, the best thing we can do is to keep our um, spirits up. And so that's hopefully what we're going to do. Although I am not your best, not your best person right now at keeping other people's spirits up. Although I swear I will try. Hey, Desert Nana. <laughs> Good to see you. Mary Beth. Right. Yes. Anyway, so we're having tea. I'm having tea. You can go grab some tea if you wish. As usual. Oh, I forgot to record. Just a minute. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to push the record button to have it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just a brain fart. <sighs> um, 
Yeah, so many hoot. Um, what was I saying? I interrupted myself. Oh, I don't know how long I'll be on, but I'll be on as long as my body mind cooperates with me. Hey, Carla, good to see you. Really nice to see you, Carla. Um, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, the body mind is a little um, like this right now. My body is uh, deep into recovery, physically recovering. And so all the things that I didn't have time to notice for a year or longer have now the body, my body has gone, oh, oh, well, we can get your full attention now. <laughs> So all the things you ignored, you won't be ignoring now because we are going to demand that you pay attention. So, yes. So I'm experiencing a lot of things that I didn't expect to experience and I didn't experience all of last of 2021. Being an active caregiver, very active caregiver, very physically demanding active caregiver. You know, you think, oh, I'm strong and I'm just sailing through this experience. And then you come to the, after it's over and you go, well, maybe I didn't sail quite as easily as I thought I did. <laughs> My body is just like, I mean, I have never ached as much as I've ached. It's supposed to be Drama Free Friday, I know. I've never ached as much as I have ached in the last um, four or five weeks. Crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Lucinda. Um, so anyway, it's been, um, it's been a really, really, um, it's an interesting time in my life. Let's just say that. So I thought I would share some things with you and then we're, I don't know what we're going to do, but I wanted to share because pretty much I, um, yeah, exactly, Becky. When you have more than one person um, on the team, that really helps. Uh, I thought I would share some things with you because pretty much on the streams on Fridays, I, since I started streaming, which was 2006, I think, five or six, I don't remember. I started streaming on Ustream. And pretty much at that point in time, I was just streaming, you know, talking about whatever life experiences were going on, you know. And so I've continued that. And um, hi, Barbara. And um, so I guess, you know, that's still part of the part of my journey. And I think that's part of why some people watch, certainly not everybody. But I think some people watch this particular channel because they like to see, you know, the ups and downs and ins and outs of, of somebody my age and my particular life experience, um, of which I've had a few, <laughs> of which I've had a few. So anyway, I thought I would show you one of the things that I do in any situation when I'm trying to learn something or figure something out or... Um, or heal through something is that I start looking for what resources are available and COVID of course makes everything much more complicated still and so I've had to do a lot of uh, stuff by myself and um, hi Sharon Okay, that's good. <laughs> Send me a peeing puppy. I have a spot bot to clean up after it. <laughs> anyway, put the tea over here. Anyway, so I thought I would show you some of the books that I have. And just because you never know, somebody else might need them too, right?
so this one I have shown, the first one I'm going to show you, I've shown this one in the past. Um, this was a gift to me, sent to me by my son. Get my... Okay. This one was sent to me by my son, oh, I don't know, a couple of years ago for my birthday, I think. And... Um, It's just, it is an absolutely beautiful book. And he sent it to me because of the, the natural kinds of mandalas that are throughout the book. And it's just, I mean, it is truly, truly eye candy. And it is, the, this is kind of like the abandoned art. Well, it is abandoned art in that you go... You collect natural materials, natural stuff, and you make a mandala or an altar or whatever, and then just leave it. So here he is making one over here in the... There, you can see. So he's just, you know, it's just a, a really nice way of creating mandalas or altars or whatever you want to call it and then just leaving them for people to find and then for them to um you know be blown away or whatever happens to them so it's a it's just a, a really beautiful it's just a really beautiful book so here's the raw materials that he collected and here's the mandala that he made really really beautiful and just you know color combinations there's nothing like the colors of nature and you know to just sit and study because I don't think that most of these have been they may have been enhanced a little bit but I just for the purposes of printing but I don't think that most of them have been enhanced too much. But aren't they pretty? So, anyway, on all different kinds of ways of doing mandalas, you know, this one, with all the little compartments. Isn't it beautiful? Um, and it's and there are all kinds of quotes throughout too. So the aim of art is to represent not the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance by Aristotle. So that's another thing that's really wonderful about the book is you know the quotes throughout. Can we speak in flowers? It will be easier for me to understand. <laughs> My in case you didn't know, I've told this before, but of course the audience is always changing. Um, my uh, my dad taught at the university here where I live. He taught there for 30, I think it was 37 years, something like it. I don't think he made it to 40. It was between 35 and 40 years. And he taught flower arrangement and greenhouse construction and flower store management and all that kind of stuff. It was, a, it was called floriculture. It was in the horticulture department. And so our house always smelled like flowers. And I didn't realize that, of course, because anytime it's natural, you know, something you grow up with as a kid and it's part of your life, good, bad, or indifferent, that's just how your life is, right? It's how your world functions. And um, so my house always smelled like flowers. And, you know, it felt, smelled like a flower store because he would do whatever he did at school you know, at the university teaching his classes and then leftover flowers and that sort of thing or the flowers that he used to demonstrate with or whatever, he would bring those home. So we always had beautiful, fresh flowers. He was very anti, when I was a kid, plastic flowers had, had come into being and a holy moly, he was real upset about that. <laughs> he was super upset about plastic flowers. That's the worst thing that ever happened. And, and a lot of them were really super ugly. And, and, but that was because it was so hard on florists and I don't know all his reasons. He was, he was a cranky old professor.
he was a cranky old professor. Um, anyway, um, and then as I was in, I guess, high school or something, then the silk flowers were beginning to come into um, fashion. He didn't think he liked those very well either, but a lot of those were more accurate representations of the real flowers, and he got a little more accepting of silk flowers, marginally. Plastic, never. <laughs> never, never, never. So anyway, uh, he would have enjoyed... The he would have enjoyed this art of going out and, um, you know, doing things in the in nature. I think he would have enjoyed this. But just look at the col colors and the color combinations. Yeah. And this one, I love this. You know, and he's this author not only uses his name is Dale Day D A Y. It's a male Day Shieldcret. I think is how you say his name. Okay, let's see. Chat all of a sudden came to a stop, so I'm just going to make sure we're still going. Okay, we are. <laughs> just checking. Um, so he uses all kinds of natural materials, not just um, flowers. Like these are the seed pods, and but all of it's natural things, you know, pieces of Hello, Werner's Grin. Sorry, I don't know your name, but thank you. It's good to see you, too. Thank you for joining us. Uh, these are pine cones that have been taken apart, and then the seed pods around, you know. So this is the mandala. This is the detailed shot. And you can follow, if you're on Instagram, you can follow the, the I think it's the hashtag, Morning Altars. And you can see even more of these. I screenshot a lot of the ones that they show um, on Instagram and include them in my, print them out and use them in my journals. Yeah. You're listening quietly. <laughs> okay. No problem. I just, you know, when the chat stops, you go, I wonder if I'm actually still broadcasting. <laughs> you know. Aren't they pretty? So anyway, eye candy his books are beautifully done and um, the basics of creating take any item from your foraged basket so he encourages you to forage first of all and uh, so you get your collect all your materials start in the center and just keep rippling out from there placing new objects down the most important thing you can do is to play and experiment have i ever said that to anybody hmm. try out different shapes triangles squares circles and spirals see if different shapes want to repeat into patterns give yourself a limit because patterns can continue indefinitely and that's true your entire altar then is a mirror of the universe many patterns into one beautiful whole yeah so anyway it's a, it's a beautiful book beautiful book and the um his books are beautifully done they're not super inexpensive but they're not awful either this was 24.95 when my son bought it um but i mean it's it's a it's beautiful yeah beautiful book Anyway, so that's one of the things that I find is has been really um, meaningful to me. Then he just recently published another book, and so I thought I would show that to you, which is called Hello, Goodbye. Same author. This is a thick book. Thick book. Um, by the same guy, Day Shieldcret. Yeah, don't forage in your neighbor's flower garden. That's from CB, who is also a wonderful flower person, <laughs> flower child. Hello, scrappy girl Dana. Yep, yeah, if they, now, I will tell you, the other day, um, I was FaceTiming with my son and his fiance. And she was showing me all of the pots of flowers, not not flowers, plants that she had all over the home. 
and all of these beautiful uh, pots of flower of plants that she had that she'd started from cuttings and she said these all came from my neighbors <laughs> so, I said did you help yourself and she said yes <laughs> like, okay you know a leaf or a cutting is not going to kill the plant so but that made that did make me laugh she said these came from all the neighbors <laughs> I thought that was funny So, um, this is the book, Hello, Goodbye. This is 75 Rituals for Times of Loss, Celebration, and Change. All of which I find myself in the middle of. So, I started reading it, and it's one of these books. I mean, it is a big book. It's a big, big book. Let me show you. The pages measure six and a quarter by nine and a quarter so it is a big book right the pages are big then when you read across the page like this it's it is a lot <laughs> it's a lot you got to keep your you got to keep your place in the line you know um but it is he wrote this after well, it was just published this year, I think. Let me see. Before I tell you a lie. Yeah, 20, sorry, 2022. And he does a lot of reflecting about the pandemic and the things that people lost during the pandemic and, you know, people and friendships and family and, and gatherings and all kinds of things uh, during the pandemic. And so it's... um. It's appropriate for, really, for everyone. And um, I don't think there are pictures in it. I think it is all... Yeah. There's some illustrations, but not any pictures. So, it is not the eye candy that the morning altar says. But for people who are in need of like it says, celebration, closure, um, expression. I think it's, from what I've read so far, it's been really good. So anyway, I just thought I would show you. But it is, it is a big, thick book. And this one I bought from Amazon. I don't know whether I paid $28.99. That's what the, the price is on the back. This is the author right here. So you can see. Um, but, I mean, even in that image is, is beautiful. Anyway, so I just thought I would share that with you. I don't know what I paid for it exactly. It is brand new, so I'm sure it's not discounted by very much at this point. So that was one. This is another one. I've had this book for a really super long time. I mean, I've had it for so long that the pages are are yellow you know yellow and it, the book is starting to fall apart in places <laughs> but when things fall apart um heart advice for difficult times this is by i don't even know if i'm going to say her name right but it's pima chodron that's all say her name which is probably incorrect and apologies <clears throat> but it's um she is a buddhist I believe she became a Buddhist monk. I can't tell you for sure. It's been a while. Let's see. Drawn from traditional Buddhist wisdom, Pima Chodron's radical and compassionate advice for what to do when things fall apart in our lives goes against the grain of our usual habits and expectations. Um, so anyway, I paid $6.99 for this book. I'm sure it does not cost that today. But I have had this for a long time, and it has been a, a real, um, there's some real good nuggets in this book. I don't agree with all of it, but I don't agree with all of it in anything. Anyway, I've had this forever. I'm sure the book doesn't look like this now. But a friend of mine who 
actually turned out to be our hospice volunteer, she and I went back a long way. We've known each other for years. Hello, Rhonda. Um, you like that book, Barbara? Yeah, it's a really interesting book. Um, so some of you are familiar with it, with this one. Some of you are familiar with, with this when things fall apart. I mean, just the title alone is enough to get you. Um, but I bought this a number of years ago and started reading it then. Well, anyway, I read it and put it on my shelf. I didn't even know I still had it. And our hospice volunteer that helped quite a bit, um, and she's still helping. She's still helping me process and stuff. And um, she sent me a text message the, uh, I don't know, probably a month, three weeks ago or something. She said, that she had just found this book at the library and she was reading it and she said, oh, it's got such good good information in it, good advice, good whatever. And um, I said, you know, I think I... And she sent me a, a picture of a uh, one paragraph. And because it really is, it, it's, it's worth the entire book just for this one paragraph, which I may or may not be able to find. Is this it? Um, yeah, here it is. Things falling, things falling apart is a kind of testing and also a kind of healing. We think that the point is to pass the test or to overcome the problem. But the truth is that things don't really get solved. They come together and they fall apart. Then they come together again and fall apart again. It's just like that. The healing comes from letting there be room for all of this to happen. Room for grief room for relief, for misery, and for joy. And so she had sent me a picture, a text message with a picture of that paragraph in it. And I said, I think I, I think I, you know, back in the back, in the far reaches of my brain, I thought, that is so familiar. I, I'm sure I've read that book. And so I looked around. I even still had it. Incredible. Anyway, so... She and I are doing some chatting back and forth about that. And it was really nice to have somebody that, you know, said, hey, you know, take a look at this. Hey, Amber, nice to see you. And then um, I found out about this author. <clears throat> Couldn't tell you where I found out about him. Because I've read many things, I follow, um, still follow a couple of dementia, um, we'll call them experts, on online, and it, you know, because there's this need to make sense out of things. There's needs to. There's a need to make sense out of the senseless. Um, and logically, I know that, and intellectually, I know that, and emotionally, it's just, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I'll get there. Anyway, I found out about these, uh, this book. This book was put out quite a while ago. It was written and published quite a while ago, and then this author has updated it a couple of times. Uh, it must be this the second this is the second edition so this must be anyway I'm telling you my words don't always come together here understanding your grief 10 essential touchstones for finding hope and healing your heart and the author is Alan Wolfelt the reason I'm going through this which has nothing to do with art although art is a very healing thing um, is that I am just pretty darn sure I'm not the only person that needs this information. So, yeah. Yeah, Lucinda said, when bad things happen to good people is another book that helped her. Yeah. Um, so, I've been working through this. This I can't work through very fast. You see where the, the bookmark is? I've been working on this since... We'll find out. The 8th of February, so I've been working on this for several weeks, and I'm not even, I'm about a third of the way through it. This is a book 
that I can't go in big chunks. You can't just start and read it to the end. So the way it's set up is there's um, oh, short sections, which is good for people whose brains have taken a crap. <laughs> then if anybody does this book, I highly recommend that you have the journal to go with it. Hi, Candy. Highly recommend that you have the, the companion journal because you go through a section of this book and then you go over to the journal and it has lots of questions and places for you to write. And it's really good for you to do that because, or at least it is for me, because it gives me a chance to um, process things and think about things that otherwise I wouldn't have thought about. And so anyway, those two are... Um, really very good but this is the second edition so new and improved <laughs> updated information and then this is also the same author and this is a um, uh, daily short kind of inspirational meditation type type thing super good and this one was yesterday. I just thought I would read a little bit. Uh, this is any of you know who Anne Lamott is? She's a an author. She's done TED talks and all kinds of things. And this was uh, she apparently had been through several losses in her life, and this was really uh, powerful to me. She said. I'm just going to read you the parts I highlighted. She says, but I had to lie in the mud with my arms wrapped around myself, eyes closed, grieving until I didn't have to anymore. I thought, golly, that, is, that, that describes a lot. You know, the lying in the mud. It, that is true. That is true. The mud days of our grief um, are powerful and painful, but there's no going around them. There's only surrendering to the pull of the mud and wallowing. You know, I'm going to tell you something. That is not what I want to do. Okay? I'm just telling you that right now. I do not want to lie in the mud. I don't want to walk through the mud. I don't want to wallow in the mud. I just want to get on with my life. And any time that I feel like that, I can just about guarantee you that the mud is going to grab me and pull me down yeah so just saying any of that for whoever needs to hear it may not be anybody there may be one person out there that needs to hear that or see those options um, of books resources and so forth so I'm just putting it out there don't know why just am um, also I have a, a a separate journal which is now stuffed with crap because <laughs> all of my books end up that way um, and I do a significant amount of writing in the book I also have included some photographs um, because fortunately I took lots of pictures over the course of the last year um, so I will show you this so I took lots of pictures so I printed those printed out 10 significant photographs because I didn't have time to see them or process them uh, what was happening at the time but I just fortunately took kept taking pictures and so now I am able to go back and have because you can only see what happened when you are on the other side of it and so now I can look back and I can see the progression which in the middle of it you can't see it it's happening too it, it's a weird thing because it's too fast but it's too slow you know it's like you feel like life is slow motion and yet it is just screaming past you and so I'm glad that I took pictures and now you know this journal is specifically for um, uh, processing you know and so I don't have all this as a rule in my regular journals I'm doing a tremendous amount of writing if you couldn't tell <laughs> anyway uh, oh that's great I mean yeah I bet they would I bet they would help Carla I don't know yeah 
That is. Yeah, it's really hard. Loss is hard. Loss is hard. Um, okay, enough of that. I don't know. I just thought I should share them with you. Yeah, and sometimes, Becky, it takes a while before it gets clear. You know, I still feel like I'm looking through a filter to some degree. And, um, hello, Melody. Well, it's just, it's just, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. Exactly, Amber. She says, uh, Barb, uh, writing is good sometimes. I just have to puke it all out on the paper and let it get it out. It's true. That's true. Okay. So, another thing I thought I would show you. I've been cleaning. <laughs> when I can stand it, I clean, organize, get rid of. Did you know the Goodwill is open on Sunday? I found that out. I don't know if it is everywhere, but it is here. It's a really good day to take stuff to drop off at Goodwill because there aren't very many people there. That was nice. Um, yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Becky. Hi, Linda McAllister. Linda McAllister. Hi, Carlene. Hello, Mickey. Yeah. So, um, in my, what I do is I'm going through the studio. Um, there is a, a Claus man had, he has a whole section here in the studio, which I, I'm not tackling. I'm letting, um, I'm going to let my son, uh, do that with me. Because we have, we have all of his, the part of the studio that he used, and then all of the garage, plus another room that is stuff that, it's a lot. Just that section is a lot. Anyway, I'm doing everything else in the studio, going through, you know, sorting, organizing, cleaning, clearing out. There's so many things. There's just so many things. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Because if I start talking about it too much, I will get upset. We don't need to go there. I'm doing okay so far today, so we don't need to go there. Anyway, as I was going through all of my um, one cabinet, you know, which my thing is I need to have cabinets. I need to not have cabinets. I need to have open shelves. <laughs> I need to have everything in clear boxes with lids on it and labeled. That's what I need because if I can see it, I remember I have it and I'll use it, right? Um, Goodwill and Salvation are closed down there. Okay. Um, <laughs> can you help re, re I wish you could. I wish you could. Um, anyway, I found this stuff, which had to, it made me laugh. It actually made me completely laugh because you know, this glue that everybody loves to use for paper things, I have had this in my stash of stuff. I've had this for I don't know how many years. Probably at least 15. This one little bottle. Because I was going to, a, um, I worked at a store, a sewing machine store, and... I was in charge of the educational part of the store. Um, and we went to this trade show. I don't even remember where it was. And the art glitter glue people person, this was a day a uh, product that was debuting then. So, um, Sorry, I'm just catching the chat for a minute. Hey, Laura. Um, so anyway, uh, we bought this because this was like their tester, their little tester thing. So I've had this glue in my stash for probably 15 years. 
it comes with the little needle nozzle in here. Never been out of this. This is this cap. It has never been screwed on this glue. <laughs> okay, how pathetic is that? And in these little containers, there is glitter to beat the band. Now, we all know how Barb feels about glitter, right? But this is, as far as glitter, glow, glitter goes, this is absolutely beautiful glitter. Um, the containers are absolutely full. I've clearly never used it. <laughs> but this one, oh, I've used this one. I probably used it for a class project or something. Yeah, I'll show you. You see, that one is actually like half half empty. The rest of these are totally full. Um, and this one looks like I might have used a... No, no, not really. Anyway. Anyway, this is the art glitter itself. So this product was actually made for putting the glitter onto garments um, and for quilts, t-shirts, napkins, tablecloths, Christmas skirts, costumes, and more. Uh, add sparkle to your fabrics for designing and personalizing with glitter. Add, add art glitter fabric. Art glitter fabric dries clear and is non-toxic. So um, that was the thing about this. This was their big selling point was that this glue dried clear and it also was flexible. So the reason I'm telling you all of that is so that in case you have this glue, and I don't know if it works with other glitter that's really super fine. Ultra fine uh, metal tip. Uh, ultra fine transparent glitter. So that was one of the things that that was the big selling point with this. Was the glitter was really fine and it was transparent. Or translucent probably would be a better, better thing to say. Anyway, I just thought... And it even came with its own little spoon, and it, it, like any other glitter, it makes a huge mess. But any hoot, I just thought I would show you that because that was a laugh to me. Um, I don't know if there's something in here, a little prize. Now, why would one have a piece of fabric wadded up in here? Maybe that's what I was supposed to test it on. <laughs> I don't know. This was stuck in the box too, which of course, since I don't know why, I'll put it back in there, right? Anyway, I just thought you guys might get a kick out of, that you might get a kick out of the fact that I have had art glitter glue and glitter in my stash since probably 2006 or seven. Yeah. Anyway, I have a whole new bottle of it too. crazy. Anyway, let me check the chat here a second. Bye, Gail. I know it's glitter. It was glitter. Yeah, I should use it, shouldn't I? I know they do have glitter. I guess they still have glitter. I don't know. But that was how it was originally sold. I know glitter is not my... Mm. <laughs> sparkly sparkly beard <laughs> there you go another thing I found when I was organizing stuff was this whole bag of watercolor small pieces of watercolor paper and some of them have stuff on them some of them don't so I'll be doing something with some of this at some point. I don't don't know what it is that we're gonna I'm gonna do with this, but um, I'm gonna be using that probably on live streams to use that stuff up. Yeah, I have a whole. I have all kinds of. Um, one of the things that we did together was we did silversmithing 
and he was much Klausman was much better at silver work torch work all that kind of stuff than I was he was far surpassed my abilities I have all of the silver stuff copper brass you know all the stuff that we did all of the solder I have the torch I have the you know all the stuff and it's just ugh, sometimes sometimes it's so overwhelming I just have to stop and walk away and wire all kinds of wire dead soft half hard half round you know it's just it's really gets overwhelming quickly you know anyway so that was you know when I found the glitter all that glitter stuff and then I've been working on the area where we had all of the the jewelry stuff and and silversmithing stuff and all that I've been working on that and I'm like I just look at and books the books I have on every topic from wire to wire sculpting to um, enamel work to you name it I have I have a stack you know of books and I'm like oh my god anyway yeah it's like amazing amazing anyway did I miss seeing somebody hi Patricia anyway okay enough complaining enough complaining there are just things there are just things okay so um, I thought I would show you this I know, Amber, it's a fact. It is a fact. So this was one of the bookmarks that uh, we, I don't know, I think I worked on, on, it, on it a little bit with you guys. I thought I might add some color to it later today. Hi, Peg. Nice to have you here. Hello, hello. So this is the bookmark. This was after the inking part of it is completed. And uh, so I think I might add some colored pencil work to it. I'm going to finish inking this one first. So I think this is actually the one that we did together. Um, started it several weeks ago. And, you know, I realized that I'm probably beating this horse totally to pieces because we started it so long ago it's like how long can it take her to do one bookmark and it's like right now it can take me a really long time <laughs> it can be a really long time my attention span is not very long my ability to concentrate is not very long and so things are taking me a long time to accomplish so that's why um and my idea bank is kind of lagging behind a little bit it'll all get there in time but it's just kind of you know lagging a little bit anyway so I thought well I can still work on these because they're still you know kind of uh, I don't know you can relate these patterns to anything it doesn't have to be a bookmark you can use them for you know decorating the sides of journal pages or art journal pages or whatever so there you go good to see you Carla Okay. Yeah, you get there in the end. So what I've done here is I've worked, just worked from the center out. And I usually don't do things in just black and white like this. Most of the time, which I'm not even going to leave this one probably black and white. I'm probably going to use some colored pencil work on it. Um, I was hoping I could just leave it black and white, but I can't quite bring myself to do that. Hey, Jan. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. You're very sweet. Good to see you, Jan. Um, oh, thank you. I'm having tea today. I went, I went to the, the place that I go to early in the mornings. I get up early as a rule and I go to there's a grocery store that's not very far from me 
and there's a um, Starbucks kiosk inside the grocery store, so, and there's also a little restaurant area. I've talked about this before. <laughs> anyway, I usually go get the coffee, and then I'll go sit in the restaurant area, and more of the time now I'm eating there because I can order something and then I can bring half of it home. So, you know, I'm like, oh, this is great. I don't even have to think about food tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> cooking is a real effort. It takes a lot of effort right now. Enough, enough about my sad story. Anyway, so I get the coffee. I go over and today the... Um, Sometimes I eat, sometimes I don't. So usually I will stop at the the host stand and say, and then they'll look at me and they'll say, are you eating today? And I, yep. Do you want your usual table? I said, yes, because I pay rent on that table. <laughs> yes, I pay rent on that table. <laughs> and, you know, then they laugh and we're all good. I know it's eccentric. You don't have to tell me it's eccentric. Okay. So anyway, let's go back to this. So I worked from the center out. So I would do a little bit and then stop and ink it and then draw some more with the pencil. <coughs> and then, you know, ink a little bit more and then, you know, add some more detail and then add some more ink. And the hard part of this for me is with it not being the entire mandala for me, which I am used to taking one design, making one decision, and doing it around the circle, and then making the next decision and going around the circle. Well, when you don't have the circle, it is a real, um, it's a real challenge to me to, you know, to only do a snapshot. It would be far easier for me to do the entire mandala and cut out the middle of it, but that wasn't the challenge I had for myself. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and ink this one and then see if we can do some colored pencil on the other one if my brain holds out uh, long enough. So we'll see. So what I've done now is I've completed this end. I've mirrored it with pencil, which I knew better than to try and do and talk. So I've done it with pencil. So if all goes well, I should be able to just trace over my pencil lines. Right? You like it, Linda? Oh, good. Good. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can... Let me scoot you in a little bit so you can see the mess that I'm working on. And... I'll try to keep it where you can see and keep my head out of the picture. Anyway, so the last time we were together, I had gotten my hula hoop. Remember that? My weighted hula hoop. And so I have been working. I was going to see if I could find that article about me as a kid, but I forgot to look for it. I'll try to look for next time. Like I'm going to remember that, right? Anyway, got the hula hoop out. Put it together that night. And, um, goodness sakes, is that a challenge. I've gotten to the point now where I can keep it up for about 30 seconds. <laughs> because the hula hoop's job, its desire is to go to, uh, because it's weighted, it's like three pounds. Its desire, its greatest desire is to go to the ground. And I hope that clock doesn't annoy you guys. I guess if it does, you'll just have to deal with it. When my son was home in December and January, he restarted the clock. So it, um, it chimes, chimes on the hour and I think the, the half hour, I think. Anyway, it is loud. 
but it makes noise in the studio and it's kind of nice to have that the noise so anyway this hula hoop adventure oh, if I don't get any exercise any other way I get the exercise by bending over to pick it up off the ground <laughs> so there is that you know The cats think I am, have completely lost my mind. The dog is not sure what in the world is going on. And to tell you the truth, I don't know what's going on either. So we're all in this we're all on the same page. None of us know. None of us know. But anyway, it's it is quite a challenge. I mean, I watch YouTube videos about how to do it. And of course, they make it look easy because once you've got once you've got the movement, it is easy. And there have been times that I've actually hooped for more than 30 seconds and I'm like, "Oh, look at me go." And as soon the minute, the minute I start feeling confident, it just go it's just like gravity goes, "Oh, really?" Whew, and down to the floor it goes. It's like, what? <sighs> Hoop channel. Oh, my goodness. It is a challenge. Uh, Ray seems to be doing pretty well. Yeah. He seems to be doing pretty well, from what I can tell. He's very busy, of course. And that's good. You know, there's a certain blessing in staying busy. certain blessing in that yeah but it's that hula hoop whew, that weighted hula hoop is something else they even have well if you have a, a Mac I don't know if they have this on on uh, PCs too or not but on Macs they have all kinds of smart things. They have smart folders and smart uh, playlists and smart, I don't know, it's all this smart stuff. I'm not smart enough to know how to use the smart stuff. My son does. <laughs> he does great. He does, he figures out all the, the shortcuts. When that kid, I mean, he's not a kid now, but when he was a kid, there was a, uh, I've forgotten what the, the, math system was it was something that they were I don't know what they I, I don't know what it was they were selling on TV it was some infomercial thing and it was a thing where they you could teach kids to count on their fingers you know do math on their fingers kind of like a um, abacus Aww. oh Joyce that's really nice of you thank you thank you so much <laughs> you didn't need to do that but that's really kind of you um, I don't know what it was called <laughs> and but it was some system it was like having your you know how the um, in some cultures they have an abacus and that's what they do in Asian cultures I think where they can do their math it's like a calculator but it's super simple uh, Chisenbop that's what it was that is what it was that is what it was hi Violet thank you that is what it was called and it was a finger thing. Well, my son watched that on TV. I don't know uh, because we didn't buy the um, we didn't buy the program or anything. And he used that that idea and taught him, made up his own system, <laughs> made up his own system. And he could go backwards and forwards. Um, oh, thank you, Joyce. <laughs> He could he could add and subtract using his fingers so fast uh, that when I didn't even realize that that's what he was doing until we got into multiplication and division and that became that's when math challenges showed up and he from that time this is when he was a little boy from that time all the way through until now he will do the same thing now he will take the time to figure out a system. In, in fact, when he was a kid, he would spend more time uh, figuring out a system to beat the system than, than it would take to just do the thing to begin with. <laughs> but 
but he knows smart folders, smart this, smart that, everything. Anyway, they now have smart hula hoops, okay? That's what where this was all going. Believe it or not, I made it back to the beginning of the thought. Hi, Alicia. Oh, just thank, thank you. That was really sweet. <laughs> um, Chisenbop. That is what it was called, Chisenbop. So anyway, smart hoops. Smart hula hoops. Did you know there was such a thing? Doesn't look like a hula hoop. Um, but yeah, smart hula hoop. You can look it up and see what it is. It's very strange, I think. I think it's a strange looking outfit. But anyway, it's called a smart hula hoop. So they, they'll have videos on comparing regular hoops to smart hoops and so forth and so on. So anyway, mine's not a smart hoop. Mine's a dumb one. Yeah, mine's just a dumb hoop. It's weighted. So it's heavier than the, the ones like you get in the discount or big box stores that have BBs in them or whatever it is they have in them that make them make the sound. I may have to get one of those too just because apparently I'm in the maybe I collect hula hoops now I don't know. <laughs> anyway wish me luck. I'm determined to um, be able to conquer the hula hoop. Because why not? Every once in a while you just have to have a, a new challenge, don't you? You just have to have a new challenge. Okay. So I'm going to switch to what I was using to do that was the PN, which is the plastic nib um, micron pen. I do like the micron, the plastic nibs a lot. Um, because they... Um, if you are one who is heavy-handed, which I don't think I'm heavy-handed until I start doing something like this. And then I can get a little bit heavy-handed and I can ruin the little felt tips on these pins. That's super annoying when you do that. Super annoying. And the plastic nib is kind of what they would consider a beginner micron. And the tip doesn't tend to wear down quite as fast. But then when it comes to some of these narrow, tinier lines and things, sometimes I find that it is better if I go back to the felt, felt tip. I've been watching the Great Pottery Throwdown the first couple of seasons. Um, I found it on HBO Max which I didn't even know I got. <laughs> but anyway, I found that I've learned a few things. Um, I've come into the kicking and screaming, which usually happens to me on most things, into the more current state of computerizations and TVs and all that. I have a son bought me a fire stick because it made sense to get rid of the cable anyway it's a whole long story nobody wants to hear and um, okay, 
Just a minute, I gotta think. Thinking is thinking is hard, people. Thinking is hard. Doesn't really matter if this is great or not. It's just something to do, you know? It's just something to do. All right, I gotta finish this business in the middle. So anyway, on the fire stick, it he put HBO Max on it. And so it had, sorry, I'm really struggling to talk and do this at the same time. <laughs> anyway, Great Pottery Throwdown. Interesting show. I don't like, I mean, I'm not a pottery person. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what I did here. I'm having to look upside down and backwards, which I can barely do this forwards. This one's going to look a little different than the other one. That's okay. Like, it's okay, Barb. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Um, okay, this one goes this way. So anyway, if you have HBO Max and you like competition type shows, it's really an interesting show to watch, I think. Even if you're not a um, pottery person. I don't know. I may have talked about that before. We may have talked about this before. My favorite thing that they do on that show is that one of the builds is toilets. <laughs> now that did make me laugh. When they first said that they were going to build toilets. It's a, it's a production from the UK and I'm like... Toilets? Toilets. Yeah, they do. They build toilets. <laughs> yeah, they built toilets. They built some interesting toilets. Let's just say turtle <laughs> comes to mind. <laughs> the Great Pottery Throwdown. <laughs> great yeah. toilets they built that was one of the challenges toilets and they had to work yeah they had to work anyway interesting show interesting show all right so let's finish this up this should be the end of this unless i just flat out miss something which is also always possible So if you get um, HBO Max, you can check it out. All right. But it always seems to me like they just don't give these people enough time to do any of this stuff, you know? But it's kind of like cooking shows. I don't know how they expect people to get done with um, 
those cooking challenges either. It's like, it takes me longer to think up the thing than to actually do whatever it is you're asking these people to do, you know? Whether it's cooking or pottery or whatever, that's a big part of the big part of the challenge, you know? See if you can accomplish the thing in the amount of time that they're allotted. I hate the eliminations, though. I do hate those. All right, good enough. Let's finish this up. Okay, what's blown away? Oh, glass blowing. Oh, that's good. I gotta write that one down. Blown away, and it's on Netflix. Okay. Because I like all those. I do like most of those competition shows. One of my favorites is um, Worst Cooks on the Food Network. I haven't seen it for a while. But, oh, goodness, that's one of my favorites. The things that some of those people do or don't know, I just find really entertaining. It makes me laugh a lot. Okay, so with any luck, I'm going to look at this from far away to see if I can get an overview here to see. I think I got most everything drawn in on that one. Worst Cooks is just really funny. Hello, Chris. Good to see you. Yeah, me too, Missy Lulu. Exactly. Nailed it. What's nailed it? What is that one? Yeah, I really like Food Network. I haven't found it yet on my <laughs> on my fire stick thing. I just got started watching some of these, you know, series of things. I watched the whole I watched the whole thing of Gilmore Girls, all the seasons of Gilmore Girls. I mean, it just, you know, escape is a wonderful thing and TV is a lot better for you than alcohol. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. All right. Grief is tricky business. Tricky business. Yeah, Project Runway. I like Project Runway, too. All right. I'm going to get my pencils out here. I'm going to do this for about 15 minutes. Gilmore Girls is just like, just complete fluff, you know? It's complete fluff. Works great. Uh, works really well. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you my pencils, and then we'll, then you'll just know what I'm digging in. This is my container of pencils. These are Cezanne pencils, which came from Jerry's Artorama. And what I have here is I have the, uh, I made my swatches. I did this whole swatch thing, and then I cut it apart. And then it's like, well, most of these are upside down, by the way, in relationship to how I put them in this 
container, but you know, doesn't matter. It works for me. Uh, so this is this is all my swatches of colors, but these are Cezanne pencils. So I just keep the swatches in here with the uh, with my pencils. Okay, so that is what is in here. Just so you know. Okay. All right, so that's what I'm going to be digging in. Master Cook nailed it, nailed it on Netflix. Okay, I'll look up, up that one. But Gilmore Girls was just a complete, it's just fluff. Oop. Showed you the pencils, except I never changed the shot. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Anyway, what I showed you when you couldn't see it was these are my swatches. And um, these are the Cezanne colored pencils, as I said, off, off shot uh, from Jerry's Artorama. And these are just my swatches. And I did this in one great big piece of watercolor paper and then cut it apart and stuck it in here with the pencils. Anyway, that's why the swatches look ridiculous. So. There you go. All right, so let's go from here. Let's see what we can come up with. Let's, I'm just gonna pick a color. I'm not gonna pay any attention to what colors they are. I'm just gonna pick one. And then we're just gonna do some coloring in. Uh, whether I will do any shading and that kind of thing remains to be seen. I don't know. This just may be a color book sort of situation here. These colored pencils are not soft like the Prismacolors, but the price was really good and I got a great big set of pencils. Um, See if I can get in here close enough so you can see actually what I'm doing. Hello, skinny cat. Welcome, welcome. We're glad you're here. Now, the thing that can happen with these, just like any other pencil, um, and they're actually a little brighter than what you're seeing on the screen. The, light is kind of blowing out the colors. The thing that can happen with these, like any other colored pencil, is if you put enough material down on the paper, you will seal the paper. And so if you press too hard, it is going to burnish burnish the paper and then it you can't add any more pigment to it. I haven't tried these with paint thinner or Gamsol blending, you know, using that to blend in. I don't know. I I don't know if it'll work or not. I don't know if there's... I just don't know. I don't know how it would react. So, any hoot. Let's try adding, just for grins. Um, exactly, Sherry. A lot of head shaking with Gilmore Girls. I don't know if you can even see that, but anyway, all right, so we'll, I'm just going to add some more color. Miss Muppet, our little dog, um, is going to have to go in, and not next week, but the week after, she has to go in to get her teeth cleaned, and she's got a cyst or something in her mouth, the front part of her mouth, and so they're going to take that off at the same time, so she's not going to be very happy for a few days. Hopefully it's nothing. Hopefully it's just some weird 
thing. I didn't even know she had it. Um, when my son was home, he was messing with her and looked in her mouth. And I mean, I just hadn't, I just hadn't had time to do that, I guess. And uh, he said, did you know she's got this growth in her mouth? I'm like, no. I'm like, Ugh. So anyway, that'll be a nice fat experience, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, I know you can't see the colors of this. I wonder if I hold it up to this camera if you can get a more accurate. It's a little bit more accurate in the color than what you see when I'm actually doing it. So anyway, just so you can kind of get a little more accurate in the color. You can see it fine? Okay. All right, let's go to, um, I don't know, we'll just pick one. I'm not going to give you color names or numbers. I don't think they have, they have numbers, but they don't have names on them. I actually like the um, colored pencils that have names. I remember the names a lot better than I remember the numbers. That's probably because I started using Prismacolor pencils when I was doing so many cloth dolls and, you know, it was just easier to remember peach and pink and olive green and all of that. So anyway, it's just easier for me to remember the name of something than it is the, the number of it. But, Anyway, these don't have names. They're just numbered. They do seem to hold a point pretty well. Of course, my pencil sharpeners are somewhere else. I have all kinds of pencil sharpeners. And where are they? Not here. <laughs> I have stuff strung around this house to beat the band. The cats could hardly fit on the couch the other day because I had too much too much stuff piled up on the couch beside me. <laughs> they were very incensed about that. I do have the artist's way. Yep. Mm-hmm. I do. That's actually, the artist's way is actually what was responsible for me starting to be a really active um, dedicated journal writing journaler. I started doing the morning pages and then that it took me a while for the my writing uh, journaling to kind of evolve but that's where it started. Some people do not like to write. Some people think they don't have anything to write about. Some people have tried doing morning pages and think that's really stupid to do. Some people always do it. You know, it's just, you have to find what, like every other creative activity or psychological activity, um, you have to find what works for you. But, yeah, it's a good book. I have two of them, The Artist's Way and I forgot what the other one's called. Um, I can't read it from here. Anyway, there were two of them that I had. I may have get, gotten rid of the other one. I don't remember. <laughs> I've... I'll get on a rip every once in a while and go through and just, I'm brutal with the books and the magazines and stuff. And I just, and then of course, immediately afterward, then I, I'm like, what did I do with, you know, I know I had X, Y, Z. It's like, oh, you probably got rid of it, fool. Because the minute you touch it and get rid of it, then you're, 
your brain picks up on it and starts thinking of all the things that you could do with that thing that you got rid of and all the reasons that you must have it back. So the trick is not to allow yourself to go rebuy it. <laughs> you know, you donate it to Goodwill or something and then it's like, immediately you want it and it's like don't go buy that back you don't need it it's just your brain playing tricks on you so I hope you all are having a decent day today I do hope you are I think this is gonna be kind of nice having a little color in it um, let's see what color do I want to use next we're just gonna we are not gonna go for any particular color scheme we are just um, We're just going for it, that's all. That's a real close up I got going on here. <laughs> yeah, that's a real close up. Let's see. How many age spots does Barb have? Well, we can count them at this at this uh, close range. We can count them. And the wrinkles too, right? Mm-hmm. Oh well, you know, it is what it is. No point in pretending that it's other than it is. I think I like the Prismacolor pencils better than, than the Cezanne pencils, but like I said, there's a big difference in price. And, um... I was just after a bigger color assortment and I bought these several months ago when I was in need of something that I could just pick up and set down and the price was right and the you know timing sucked and it just all you know sometimes you just do what you just do whatever you do all right, I'm going to put, oh, <laughs> hi, Marion. I'm beautiful inside and out. That's really nice of you. <laughs> I am what I am. That's it. I am what I am. Still having to deal with some distasteful activities now and then. Distasteful decisions and so forth. And I do some of it and then I just stop for a while, you know? Hopefully I don't sound like I'm a depressed mess because I don't think I am, but then I'm not sure if I'm a good judge of that. <clears throat> I think this is going to be, I think this is going to be pretty when it's all said and done. All right, I'm going to wrap up for today because I've, I've uh, gone on as long as I can. Marion got pastels, uh, General's pastel chalk pencils. Those are nice too. Yeah, those are ni nice. Nice. Yeah, I had it, but where'd it go, right? So anyway, there's the where we are at this point. It's not it's not showing up. The colors are not showing up 
quite as as nicely as they really are you know such is the challenge of getting from me to you anyway thank you so much for joining me today and um, hanging out for a little bit hopefully some of the books I showed you might be of value if you got here later and you want to see what those books are um, they don't have to do with art necessarily other than the very first one I showed you could be considered an art book and um, yeah so hopefully I will be back next week when is next week next week is the first uh, Friday in March and hopefully I will be here there are sometimes like last week was one of them I got up I got ready I was ready to stream I was you know everything and it was just like I can't you know I don't know why but I just can't so on the days that are like that that's just how I'm gonna have to do it so I will try to put up a message to let you know if I'm streaming or not so Thank you so much. Thank you to the mods that were here today and for helping me out and keeping an eye on things. I really appreciate it. And I plan to be here next week. We'll see how it pans out. So thank you so much for being here. And remember to get creative today because you know it is easy. You just got to do it. So I'll see you later. Bye, everybody.